I'm loving the pop off. What's good? Welcome back to the Pop Off Podcast, a conversation show about the NFL week four. I can't believe we're almost already a quarter of the way into the season. I am your host, Ralph Campiano. I'm joined as always by my co host, Michael Cerrone, and we have the co host, the muscle, uh, the brains behind the operation of Rent Money joining us tonight, Adam Caps, aka Old Chisholm. And we are going to be previewing each game on the slate of week four. But before we do, the Giants just lost to the Cowboys at MetLife Stadium 20 to 15. Dallas improves their record to two and two. And the Giants falter to one and three. Cerrone, uh, any uh, did you miss Malik Neighbors? Obviously, he got a concussion at the end of the game. But while you're watching and you're seeing him, you know, pulling the eight catches for like 79 yards, did you have a little bit of a trader's remorse? Not announced. <laughs> okay. okay. Wait till you see. You're so in fucking stubborn. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, you just can't. He was well, like lights out. Go- the first three and a half quarters, he was unbelievable. He's going to be out for a week and a half. He'll be back, and he's going to be back before Kenneth Walker ever is, too. He'll be back just in time for defenses to figure out that that's the only weapon on the offense to send the safety over. But um, I think that was no, like the who, impressive who part of tonight, too. Like, Wandale Robinson was looking pretty good. Like, the Giants' offense actually looked okay. Like, it was a lot of yeah. dink and dunk, like, behind the line of scrimmage stuff. But, you know, Daniel Jones was like 24, 28 for a while there. Like, he was completing passes. Like, they weren't just going to neighbors. Like, they were. Mm targeting everybody yeah the giant the giants list and i'll i'll do a hand up i didn't watch i was in class so i was watching it through Gamecast, just watching neighbors pop up his little name pop up every 42 <laughs> seconds um, time and time again. so yeah obviously you know he, he had a great game like 11 receptions for like 111 yards or whatever yep. um but i'm i'll never i'm not going to stand here and say i no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna backtrack on a decision that I made that quick. I'm gonna stay true to it. I'm gonna stand tall to it, and I'm gonna say long term, I still made the right trade. It is pretty cowardly of Petey to, you know, just the second the trade's over, just throw shade at me and roast me while he's texting me three million times to uphold it, uphold it. Oh, can you uphold it, uphold it? I'm like, bro, I want to do the trade. I accepted it. Like I'll uphold it. And then for him, the second after, you know it looks really good for him. Uh, he just washes me. Um, and I think that'll come around. I think Kamara always comes around. I mean, welcome um, to the world of also for, I'm not sure if this is your first time interacting and in trade with him, but yeah, this is uh that's the way that he rolls. All right. Every, I've known him for so, 24 years since he was born, January 18th, bastard. 2000. I think we just revealed that his middle name is Alan as well. You can never trust a motherfucker with the name Alan in their name. Uh, <laughs> Caps, I want to ask you, uh, Cowboys, do they like strike any fear into NFC opponents? What are your thoughts on them four weeks through the season? Honestly, the entire NFC East might be the most overrated division mm. in the NFL. I've said this multiple times. Uh, they look great playing against each other. Uh, <laughs> against anyone else, not so much. Um, they're like I, I cousins like they... in the backyard on Thanksgiving. Like they, they <laughs> yeah. look really good when they're playing against each other. But then you trot against them out Joe, against Joe, St. Anthony, yeah. five years they old. To, they have to play against the Packers of St. Anthony's, and they're fucked. <laughs> Dude, honestly, I just, I just picture CD burning his grandma. Yeah, just in the backyard no. on a double. It's all the drunk uncles, and then all of a sudden they'll go and like all of the the high schoolers show up like they all their nephews that are just in the peak shape of their lives they're 17 they're on some sort of testosterone enhancer that's not going to get picked up by the Mm -hmm. local regulating officials of their high school football (laughs) division and uh that that's when you know it's miller light versus you know androgen receptors who's who's going to win it's the age-old the age-old battle who really knows but the age-old battle of miller light versus androgen receptors who could ever yeah. underestimate that rivalry? No, I agree. Yeah, well, it's been going like, on for years. <laughs> I mean, like, Turner brought this up, I think, last year on a pod. I just don't know if they're ever going to be like a legitimate team with a guy named Dakota running their system no. at quarterback. Like, we always forget, like, Dakota. his name isn't just Dak. It's Dakota. Okay. Like, you know what is so confused for a second? You can't take you know them seriously. Name is? What? Rainy. Rainy? Dakota Rainey Prescott. Oh God, that's brutal. He made it far for a guy with that name, though. True. Tip the cap. True. Sixty million dollar salary. I mean, not bad. Um, I mean, I just thought that this game. You're right, Cap. Not bad. Encapsulated it perfectly, dude. It's just 
the NFC East, like they kind of beat up on each other. I think Dak's record against the NFC East is like 32 and eight, which makes me yeah. wonder what's his record against the rest of the NFC. I mean, I know they've won like Not 12 great. or 13 games last few regular seasons, but then they show the playoff record. It's two and five. So I'm kind of in a position with the Cowboys the same way I am with Joel and beat in the Sixers. I'm like, I don't care what you do in the regular season. You can do whatever the fuck you want from October to January or December. Show me in January, maybe February. Yeah, they're they're the New York Yankees of the NFL. Mm-hmm. Like they're gonna go, they're gonna spend all of the money. Um, they're gonna really invest in the flashy style points whenever they can. I e C D Lamb being a first round pick a few years ago, and there is so many gaping holes. Um, luckily for them, C D has worked out great. Unfortunately for them, they had to pay Dak sixty million dollars in order to have a consistency of someone throwing him the ball. We didn't see it last week. This week, they looked a lot better. But another thing I was going to mention too about the Giants was I kind of was getting like the Arizona Cardinals from last year a little bit tonight where it was like shocking that they were able to move the ball with Mm. the guys that they had on the field. I, I know neighbors is obviously a unit, uh, Outside of that, though, you got Devin Singletary is your running back one. Um, Tyrone Tracy Jr., the pride of the Iowa Hawkeyes, turned Purdue Boilermaker, is now an NFL running back. Like it, it kind of blows my mind. Amir Smith Marset, another, another Hawkeye, yep. uh, coming out with uh, just aggression on punt returns, which is if, if you can have aggression on special teams, you're going to go far in yep. the NFL because yep. that's he had aggression on special time. teams. He had aggression at summit in Iowa city. Petey was uh, working the door the <laughs> and behind the wheel. Petey was working the door at summit for like six months or something like that. And Amir Smith, Marset <laughs> walks in with two white girls, one on each arm in a cookie monster flat bill pointed sideways. And he's no like, that's way. just a D one wide receiver right there. Just looking ridiculous. <laughs> Doesn't fucking matter. He's just got a couple of rockets on him. Uh, Tyrone Tracy had a poetry class with me actually when I think I was a sophomore and he was a freshman. So uh, special kid, always gonna be rooting for him. But you're right. I mean, was, was he a good reader? <laughs> no, 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 no. So here I, I actually remember the first couple of lines in his sonnet. It was bright lights, big stage, Roger Goodell calling my name, hugging mama, told her no more pain. And it was like, damn, Tyrone, you're digging deep for this one, dude. Joe Evans was in the same class, former edge rusher from Baltimore Raven. I was going to say that sonnet is literally just a combination of playing like Madden superstar while listening (laughs) to my beautiful dark twisted fantasy in the background. I don't even know if you can give him like the like artistic side of my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. I think you have to like say like maybe T.I. or something like that, like trap music. It's just the song All of the Lights. (laughs) <laughs> that's it but before i let uh this moment pass us by while we have pd campiano in the conversation once again i i've done a trade with him already once this year uh and i just want to get a feel for all the listeners out there yeah um for Let's who's the pd kid. yeah like who's the pd of your fantasy football league mm. um so i i did a deal with him pretty much right off of the bat because I had like five running back ones across a a handful of teams. I think we had ETN, Kenneth Walker, who started out on my team, James Cook, Josh Jacobs, Najee Harris. Uh, So we had plenty of depth and I wanted to get Bijan. We got Bijan. James Cook is looking phenomenal as well. I'm, so the I'm deal was Kenneth but, Walker and ETN for Bijan, correct? If I remember correctly. Yep. Yep. And so far that's looking good. Mostly because I, I, I mean, Kenneth Walker is like the sisterhood of the traveling pants of our fantasy league at this point, I think. But uh, here's, here's a few, here's a few of the texts that I got from PD before. And then after Here these we trades go. occurred, don't so, censor them. Uh, None. No no censorship here. I'm not <laughs> I'm not a Democrat. So uh I I shot him a text uh right at twelve fifty seven PM Central yeah. Standard. Important. Um I just said, Hey, ETN and Kenneth Walker for Bijan. Looks like you could use some running back depth. 
He goes, hmm, let me think on this. Two minutes later, it just says, hmm, again. And then he goes, <laughs> and, and I was like, I don't know what you want me to do with this, right? So I'm like, if you want receivers on top of that to get involved, I could give you ETN and any of my guys for Bijan and then Nico Collins. I've, I'm trying to get Nico still. And he's like, oh, I need Nico. Mm. I'm like, oh, would you rather dish Amon Ra? And he's like, no, my wide receivers are not hashtag all caps on the block, T-H-A, the block. So we just we just settled for the original offer that I sent him. Let me consult with my consigliere. Like, Did he steal I, I my line? He Google. He said yeah, he consigliere? He, That's been my line in the yeah. chat. I'm like, let me well, consult I, my consigliere, and I have a consigliere. But he spelled it wrong. He, he spelled it wrong. Embarrassing. Uh, Embarrassing. Which is the funnier part, yeah. <laughs> He was um, the never good speller between you, the two brothers. You you could give me twenty four hours and a dictionary. I couldn't spell that word right. So <laughs> but you continue. Can't, you can't <laughs> spell my last name, and it's. I, I mean. Oh yeah, laps. Well, that's just autocorrect. That's just me texting and driving. <laughs> you got to knock that shit off, man. Hashtag X. Well, hashtag Go Maroons. Um, isn't it K A P S C H? Yep. Yeah. Nailed it. Yeah. You nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. I just be texting um, and driving. So. He wants to consult with his consigliere because he's incapable of running his own team, apparently. Is that so, a head hamster? It's me. It, yeah, <laughs> I don't. I was going to say, I just have my brother as a co-owner and a co-manager in case uh, I get roofied or something and I don't mm. wake up in time to change my lineup. You always have a fallback plan, fallback guy. I right? like that. Um, yeah. So the it kind of pissed me off. Yeah, roofie insurance policy. Uh, you're in good hands. So I was upset at the the misspelling of consigliere. And so I was like, I will hold this deal until 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then it's off the table and I'm giving it to someone else. Mm. Immediately, immediately the trade gets sent over to me after that because, bitch, art of the deal. Art Read of the it. deal. Live it. He, he kept texting me after that. And I kind of sent him a pity response. Good deal today, Capsh. I think we shook up the league a bit with that one. Uh, no, <laughs> promise you we didn't. <laughs> I think we shook up the league week, a bit. Oh my god, he's just dramatizing the shit out of this. Because, like, in his yeah. mind, he think I was like, he's dude, God. No, well, I was yes. Like, I mean, dude, we I, both have main character syndrome out the ass. Like, we were raised to have that. So and he, it, it combats <laughs> against one another, and we're both in the same league. And he <laughs> consults me for fantasy advice when we're in the same league together, which is like rule number it's one: good stuff. don't be doing that. Like you cannot like Jerry Jones doesn't talk with Robert Kraft about who should I draft, who should I trade for. That's just idiotic. No. Yeah, you don't do that. You just you just don't. But Tuesday of this week, new conversation <laughs> starts, and this is going back to the original trade with Cerrone, where they were like, "Who's got it better? We need to veto this with the rest of the league." He's like, "Hey, since you know that that's a fair trade, will you go uphold that? Don't ask me to uphold your fucking." trade like don't panhandle me you know don't buttonhole me i don't want that shit uh and i was like having to uphold or veto a trade is very homosexual right man says pd it should just go through so please spelled pls please go uphold for Cerrone and i because dude like if you want to make a trade and think it's fair it should just go through He's, Two laughing emojis. You can tell that and this then, ate away at his psyche for hours yeah, of the day. Yeah. Just like the like, it wasn't going to get vetoed. There wasn't. Gonna, it has to be, I think, five votes for the veto, and we'll get rid of the veto. I don't really believe in it. It was just automatically installed by ESPN. Yeah, ESPN. So like that was like in his head. He's like, "Viv is such a fucking douchebag." Like making people veto my trade when I trade Merck Cerrone. It's like, no, dude. Like just relax. Like nobody's thinking about it half as much as you are. Yeah. So I sent I sent Popsy, which for the record that might be his new nickname. I Not feel bad. like that's gonna stick. Popsy. Yeah, yeah uh, Popsy. Because my dad my dad is Pop, you know. So I can't I can't just be going around calling everyone's dad Pop. You know, yeah. that's a special thing between a father and a son. And uh PD texted me yesterday morning. Got any deals for me, huh? <laughs> We're off to a great start. Um I was like, yeah, I'm just waiting for Pop C to accept or deny the offer that I sent him. Once again, I have just too many running backs, and I need a depth at wide receiver with Jalen Waddle sucking shit. And so he's like, oh, what, what was the offer? And I said, Brian Robinson for JSN, 
looks bad on paper, but I'm confident in it. And then PD responds, I don't have JSN. See, all right, that's where PD and Cerrone and have similarities. <laughs> that's where the Venn diagram is between PD and Cerrone. That sounds, Just, that sounds like a, a text I'd send. Yeah, yeah, the ability like two two to together. comprehend the text <laughs> based on the previous text that have been sent, or maybe a link gets sent in the chat and there's text below the link and they just didn't click the link so they don't get the reference. Oh, that was such a bad look. Context. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a great just chronicle. Lights on no one home. Yeah, that's a great lights chronicle on no where your guys is uh, text, texting between you and P. Uh, there, there's you, one more that has ahead. to get read. Because uh, <laughs> the very next text, after he says, I don't have JSN, and I say, I know that you don't, he just says, I'm definitely interested in Bijan, though. After he literally <laughs> traded Bijan to me, like, a week and a half prior. What do you mean, Pete, would be best friends? I think he probably <laughs> no, would. Who, who yeah, knows? Probably would. All right, round of applause. That was great. Good job by you, Caps. Way to detail it. You're a storyteller at heart, man. All right, uh, big story coming into this week. NFC South matchup, uh, the first game that will be kicking off at noon. Scott Hansen will have raging testicles for this one. The Atlanta Falcons are favorites at home by one and a half points against the New Orleans Saints. Saints coming off of a tough loss at home against the Eagles. Falcons coming off a tough loss at home against the Chiefs. Again, Falcons are favored by one and a half. The over-under is set at 42 and a half. Cerrone, who do you like? This is such a this is a very weird game. Um, I feel like this whole division when they play each other, it's just weird games. I'll go I'll go Falcons at home. Um I don't. I don't think the. I think I like the Falcons. They got a good little squad over there. They're figuring it out. I believe in Kirk, um, and I feel like any division game. Uh, I feel confident taking the home team, and I think the Saints. The Saints kind of come back down to to earth, um, even with the loss to the the Eagles. I think they really come down back down to earth here, and uh, and Falcons step it up. I don't know. I like. I like Kirk. I like BJ. I like Pitts. Um, yeah, at home, give me the the Falcons with the points, or you might as well just go money line if it's if it's that close. But yeah, one and a half, uh, Falcons Saints. This is the matchup between the quarterbacks that shop at Menards. You got Kirk Cousins going against Derek Carr. It's just vanilla yogurt Dads. on vanilla yogurt. I mean, there is nothing of substance here. You know, Derek Carr's had a pretty good start to the season. Didn't look as good against Philly. Kirk has been up and down for the most part, but he's shown the flashes of Minnesota Pete Kirk. Uh, I am also on the Falcons by one and a half. Capture boy, you're you, all right. So I should have done this at the beginning. The record so far through three weeks, I am twenty and twenty five overall. Cerrone is one game behind at nineteen and twenty six. Reesberg has been the only other guest on the predictions pods thus far, and he went eight and seven in his stint. So Capture. Your mission is to beat the line, record baby. of eight and seven. What do you like here? I am on. I'll, I'll give you a point, but then also uh, total uh, for ATS and total. So I'm on the Falcons as well. Um, there's been a really interesting trend across the NFL as far as just predictive analytics go. Um, I I don't know why or how, but the public hasn't figured out that any time you have a team that is favored at home and it's like five points or less. I want to say uh, that that has been hitting like a motherfucker mm. every single game this really? year. But on the flip side, uh, I'll actually, I'll pull up the tweet so that I don't botch this as badly as I just botched the the point I just made. But um, <laughs> do you guys follow the Ben DeMarco guy on Twitter? He pops up on my suggested no all the time. Cerrone's anti Twitter, so we don't have to bring that up right now. But um, yeah, he does pop up on my feed all the time, like my for you page. Uh, I just while you're looking it up, I will mention that the over under on this game Fox, is I'm sorry. 42 and a half. Uh, I saw an inst- yeah, interesting thread actually on Twitter where I had never really taken this into consideration, but you know, the higher the over under is. Vegas is suggesting that there's more variability to what the final total can be as far as the spread is concerned, right? So, like, let's say the over-under is 59 and a half. Then they're, mm. in their minds, they're leaning towards it could be a blowout either way. 
versus if the over under is at let's say like 39 and a half it could be a much closer game that seems so obvious but i just made that connection so like steelers colts i think is the lowest over under of the week that's 39 and a half and vegas is mine they probably think that's going to be a closer game than what's the highest total of the week. commander cardinals they think that has potential for a blowout and i could see either of those teams blowing each other out but go ahead cash i think well first and foremost the thing about nfl betting in general that makes it so much more of an analytics game as compared to collegiate athletics in general, but specifically college football, uh, it is literally a numbers game. Um, there's, I think, four, four main numbers that you're really looking for on a week-in, week-out basis when it comes to going up against the spread. Threes, sevens, tens. Yeah things of that nature, right? It's going to happen a lot more consistently. Football and numbers. The public is the the public is typically all over that. But when you go and look at the first 3 weeks of this year, first and foremost, if you were an underdog by five and a half or more points, you're 15 and 2 against the yeah, spread about so this. far this year, and you're also 10 and 5 straight up. Mm. So that I think that's even more interesting. Um, the Giants, I think, were at five and a half going yeah. into tonight. They might have been closing line value, might have gotten them right at five on the dot, which tough push. But opened um, at four and a half earlier in the week, closed at five mm-hmm, and a half. That's where I, I got them, baby. Yep, and it just by the skin of my fucking teeth. Yeah. And also, almost twenty sixteen. Almost you're too lucky. You almost nailed that. Yeah, so I should have won, Ralph. So I uh, got Chinese food today. We had a shoot, and, you know, we got food catered to us. We got Chinese, and I got a fortune cookie. Uh, The fortune itself was horseshit. It didn't suggest anything. It was just complete vagaries. Uh, But there's numbers on the back, and the first two numbers were 20 and 16. So I'm like, oh, dude, this is a sign. I got to bet it both ways. Just put a buck on it. Crazy odds on the exact scores. It was like plus 15,000 or whatever. It was $1 to win 150. Uh, so yeah, I put it at twenty to sixteen, and it ended up being twenty to fifteen. But nevertheless, continue cash. That was so that cool. was insane. That was that was actually yeah. That would why so I was cool. so confident. That was why I was so confident in the under. Weirdly enough, like I was leaning yeah, on the, the under to the game. I think Thursday night games in the under just go together. I don't know what Division it is. Cowboys Giants. Just, yeah, yeah, just nastiness across the board. Um, Stinky right, so, yucky. Caps. You have the uh, Falcons yeah, by we, one and a half. So Ronnie is the Falcons by one and a half. I have the Falcons by one and a half. Give me the under in this one as well. I think and in half. order for the Falcons, in order for the Falcons to cover what I'm seeing right now, the live line at time of recording being Thursday night, eleven o'clock central. Uh, it's actually closer at two and a half across most sports books right now. I still think mm. that they cover this uh, field goal game. Um, obviously, if you can buy it down to one and a half, that's where you want to be because look at how shit went tonight but um i also think it's equally as important to keep an eye on these lines throughout the next two or three days in particular but especially keep an eye on where the public is going uh vegas has done a really good job this year in particular of butt fucking the public so uh you'd be up a lot of money from Last year, if you were to just ride with the public, you'd be 139, 115, and 9. So if you're a $100 better, you're up a little over a grand, just straight up tailing the public. But this year, you're 17, 30, and 1. And that's just through the first three weeks. So you'd be down more money the first three weeks of this year than you would if you tallied all of that last year. Mm. Okay, next game we have is the Andy Dalton revenge game. The Cincinnati Bengals are going to Carolina to play the Panthers. Panthers are home dogs, four and a half points. Over-under is set at 47 and a half points. I think there's been an interesting conversation surrounding the Bengals, who are obviously 0-3. The Panthers got their first win last week, 1-2. and um, According to like all metrics, you know, when, when people talk about the Bengals, they're talking about Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase because those are the headliners. But across all metrics, they're a top five offense in the league right now. They just so happen to have literally the worst pass defense 
not just this season, but even going back to last season, like the last 22 weeks of regular season football or 21 weeks, whatever it's been, they've just been the absolute worst. So I think we should calm down our conversations about Joe Burrow across the board. I think that they go into Carolina, they get their first win. The Panthers will be playing against a team that isn't the Raiders, who might have had a fluke win in that Ravens game a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and yeah, I just like the Bengals, covered by four and a half. Uh, Cerrone, what do you like here? Yeah, this Riding would be, the Panthers uh, yeah. again, back-to-back weeks. No. no, I'm flopping here. I'm going Bengals for the reason of eh, there's just no way they go 0-4. <laughs> they they cannot have that much talent and go 0-4 and, and have, you know, I, I just think that's, I don't see a world where that comes true. And then also two words, T. Higgins is back in business, um, who I think is – highly underrated, uh, falls in the shadow of Chase, obviously. But I think they handle this. They fucking – I don't know what the over-under is. I would say the over because I don't think there's any defense on either of the teams. I mean, but the over is probably like what? 47. 50. I love that over. I might throw – I might just do like I did tonight, a little spread in, you know, a spread bet and then the over. I would do easily Bengals minus four and a half with the over. Um, and again, if, if it is a blowout, Bengals aren't going to hold back because they, they need to, they need to just pick the shit out of a team. I could see them scoring 47 points on their own just because of the pure, just fury of being 0-3. And I mean, yeah, no 0-3 teams are made playoffs. So they're, they're pissed. But yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I made my little dime off the, the Panthers last week, but yeah, Bengals get it done. One and three. Chisholm. I'm going to zig on that zag. I think Andy Dalton completely changes the face of this Panthers team. The world. Watching, yeah, (laughs) honestly, the entire state of North Carolina at this point is probably just like, what the fuck are we doing here? Um, I love the overplay. Uh, Both of these teams coming into this game combined four and two for overs this year. Both of them uh, two and four combined when it comes to just covering a spread in general. Um, I think the biggest the biggest thing that I'm looking at in this game is, is this a number, in Carolina. Yes, yeah, it's it's in Carolina. Number two, I Higgins played last week. Did he not? Yeah, he did. Did I imagine that right? Oh, that's I, my fault. You're all good, bud. I'm here for you. Uh, I Higgins without Tyler Boyd. Did he do did anything? anything? Weird. Uh, I feel like. Those two kind of made each other better, and Jamar Chase. Boyd went to what the Titans? Yep, I think so. Somewhere yeah. it's really, really weird. Uh, Io Sevis or whatever his last name is, kind of getting a weird amount of targets as well from Burrow. Um, I mean, Gasecki played great. Yeah, I would maybe sneak a Gasecki anytime touchdown because that guy was all over the field. Yeah, I don't know if you guys he would. was. He was so fun to watch. Yeah, when he was in Miami, but I think. He's in a better spot for sure with with Burrow. They're going to turn it around, but I feel like this is closer to a field goal game and getting that extra point and a half like we just talked about um, is everything. The public is pretty aggressively on Cincinnati um, to the point where this line has dropped. Like you just said, I think, Ralph, it opened up closer to six, six and a half, and it's down to four and a half now. So definitely on the Panthers, definitely on the under. And then I'm going to throw in a player prop as well, just for shits, if that's allowed. Please. Uh, If you listen to Rent Money, you've heard me discuss the men rocking the Golden Domes. Uh, One of their (laughs) alumnus. One of their alumnus. They discuss the men, and that's it. That's how you just (laughs) commanded there. I could have, honestly. We discuss men uh, here, Cerrone. They discuss boys over on that podcast. Those are just children. But uh, Tommy Tremble, it's a name that you should know because he's one of the best blocking tight ends in the NFL. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but motherfucker. What's the prop right? on receptions? The prop <laughs> is on receiving yards. So there's a What's lot of eight? variation. Uh, anywhere from 14 to 26. It, it's kind of a big gap. I know FanDuel has it at 17 and a half right now, though. Um Minus 115, so a little bit of juice there. But uh, I I have him closer to that 26 number 
I think you're getting a huge edge going into Matt's this just one. Doing math, bro. I fucking love it. It's not especially... even that. It's just such an unbelievable flex to come on the NFL pod for the first time during the regular and show season. show us both up. It, we, it's know, not, we, don't, we don't do stats. We don't do well, a lot of stats, me and Ralph. <laughs> I mean, it, it's not the stats. We talk about Diddy. He said player prop, and you know the first thing that comes to your mind is you know maybe Zach Moss is like the sneakiest player prop that he can pull. He pulls. Is he their backup tight end? Like, is he even the starting tight end for Carolina? I'm I'm not sure. No, it's Zach Penn's on the day. No, Kaseki's the starting. Oh, this tight guy's on the Cincinnati. on the pan- This guy's on the Panthers. <laughs> yeah, and he's taking 17 and a half yards over on the receiving. But, I love it. <laughs> Aside from just purely looking at numbers, I think the Bengals did a good job against tight ends in their first couple of games. But if you watched the game last week, Ertz caught all five of his targets, uh, racked up 38 yards. Um, and historically, Anna Rumo's defense has been exposed by tight ends. So last year, they gave up the second most yards to tight ends in the entirety of the NFL. Um, and they have ranked bottom nine in yards allowed to that position specifically in each of the past four years. No, that's golden. That's nuggets. just that's a trend that's not going away anytime soon. And you're getting, I mean, this could be one catch and this over hits. So yeah, uh, seventeen and a half yards hammer that over. All right, next game we have maybe the best coach in the league going to visit probably the worst coach in the league. The Los Angeles Rams are going to the Windy City to play the Bears. The Bears are favored for God knows what reason by three points at home. Uh, this boils down for me. Maybe I'm being too critical. And, you know, we, we, we talked a lot critically about Ibrafalus, and he's, it's been all over Twitter how bad of a coach he is. I think he's a great defensive coordinator. He has those boys on a string on defense. They look excellent. Uh, the offense is all out of sorts. And I just think that Iberflus overall is a bad CEO. He doesn't know how to use timeouts or challenges. I'd like to get up into the control booth and use my Madden controller and just control when he uses timeouts and when he uses challenges. Because I honestly think I would do a better job at it than him. Uh, but I've That'd got the Rams cool plus three in Chicago against the Bears. Stafford versus Caleb. Going to be a lot of fun. A guy that Caleb's looked up to for a long time. And yeah, McVay's second, third, first best coach in the league, right up there with Shanahan and Andy Reid. Um, you want to go first, Caps? Yeah, I'll start with uh, – I got two props on this one. First one, Bears fans, you've longed to hear it. Mm. Caleb Williams over 223 and a half passing yards. That number is over on bet 365 right now. The Rams have been absolutely wrecked. Uh, league high 9.81 yards per attempt and the fifth most passing yards given up at the NFL thus far while allowing the second highest EPA per drop back and ranking 28th in coverage mm. uh, per PFF. So take that, you know, with a, a grain of salt, but um, this is the softest matchup that Williams has probably had thus far in his young career. And obviously there's been growing pains. You're a quarterback in Chicago. Uh, you're a rookie on top of that, but he's thrown for more yards and a higher yards per attempt in consecutive it. games uh, after what? 363 last yep. week, uh, seven yards per attempt against the Colts. Um, and he's got 8.9 ADOT and 70.9 adjusted completion percentage as well. Uh, which are both really, really solid marks for him only having three games. The other prop that I really like um, as I get ready to go into Daryl K. Royal Stadium to uh, see what the Horns are up to, I'll be watching one of their alumni on Sunday as well. Roshan Johnson. Johnson. Any time touchdown is at plus 215 over at Caesar Sportbook. Um, I think he has been so under the radar every year, Let's mostly because Herbert is like everything and more that you could ask for post David Montgomery era in Chicago. He's a very serviceable back. Um, Swift has out touched Johnson 17 to 13, but Roshan has actually been so much more effective. Oh my God. Swift's Swift. not doing 
anything. That video so of him running into the yeah, the video you sent of that was uh, that's just a tough look for him. Uh, he was so he used to be so good. Yeah, but, but also the other thing that has me leaning here is the ESPN insider for the Chicago Bears, Jeremy Fowler, yep. went on record saying, "Watch for the Bears to give Johnson." an extended look, end quote. Um, I think that Caleb is going to come out hot. They're going to have to get a lead, and I think they're going to have to pound the rock in the second half. It'll be a close game for sure. Based on those two props, you could probably guess I'm going to be going Bears minus three on this one. I hate going against Stafford, and I hate it even yeah, that with I'll... Eberflus being the coach. But as far as totals go, I like this number even more. Uh, baby, we're in the windy city and high winds are expected. There is a system play going on here, uh, where anytime you have a regular season NFL game with winds between 10 and 50 miles an hour, the temperature is above freezing and below 90 degrees. Um, that's baby, oh. you're looking at a 57% win percentage and 10% return on that investment uh, over the past thousand some events. Are we going under? Are you saying take Maybe. the under? I love me some of this under. Two what's other the, games. What's the Two other games? Or the, uh, oh, this about one, the Bears game? 41. Yeah, Bears, Bears Rams is at 41, so I'm going to take the under, and I'll just get out ahead of this now. Uh, Minnesota and Green Bay, as well as uh, Buffalo and Baltimore are the two other examples of this. Lovely. Okay. So I'll I'll take um I like I like the Roshan prop. I saw someone pick him up in fantasy too. I I was slow on that. Um I just see McVeigh and Stafford and I look to the other side and I see a rookie quarterback and Eberflus with a great haircut and a great looking beard, but not a strong hold on his team. So I gotta go Rams. Um I think I think McVeigh. I just dude Stafford is still slinging, like phenomenally. Just darts winning games. I don't think you beat the Forty ers by accident. That was a hell of a game. Um, yeah, to sum it up, I'll take the the coach and the QB on the Rams, and I'll say they they upset them. What is it? Three, and three points. Uh, plus three is what you're getting the Rams at. Uh, NFC like, North like matchup that. next, divisional matchup in Green Bay at Lambeau, like Caps oh, just said, intense wins. Minnesota is going to Green Bay to play the Packers, and the Packers are favored at home by two and a half points. Malik Willis is still a starting quarterback for the Packers. He has won two games in a row. If you would have told me that two weeks ago, I would have told you to go fuck yourself. All right, But he hasn't played against a Brian Flores defense yet. And he made C.J. Stroud look like dog shit last week. Can't wait to see what he can do to Malik Facts. Willis. I can't believe they're underdogs. I mean, you know, they're 3-0. and I get it. The hype has to fall off at some point. I'm sure Topping is shaking in his boots, just waiting for the other shoe to drop on this Vikings team. But it's still the first quarter of the season. Uh, I like the Vikings a lot, plus three. And like Caps said, uh, that wind, I'm going to take the under here as well at under 44. Big under guy. Here's where we yeah. start splitting. I'm on both. I got, of those I got Intel. Um, and by Intel, I mean not Intel. I think Jordan, he was questionable. He almost played last game. Okay. Now, what's his name over in Green Bay, the head coach? Not uh, Shanahan, uh, LaFleur. Is a smart man. He sits his quarterback, unlike Herbert, when he knows they could probably go in and win that game against the Titans when Jordan Love could maybe have played. Now, you think Jordan Love, Mr. Love over there, is going to sit out a division rivalry against a 3-0 Vikings team at Lambeau Field? I think last minute they're going to sub. He's going to get the, the nod and play the game. And that's, for, for those reasons, I am taking the Green Bay Packers minus 2.5. Because I think if you put if, – if there's an announcement, if we wake up tomorrow and they say Jordan Love's playing, what do you think that line goes to? Four? Two. Four and a half. What? Maybe. It's at two and a half oh, right yeah. now. Well, I think it goes up to mind. probably four and a half, some, somewhere around there. Um, I thought it was flipped. I think let me plays. just say this. I like, so a disclaimer. 
Cerrone, the last time you had quote unquote intel, it was on Dan Campbell selling his house. I fired that source. To, I won't listen going, to that source anymore. And then going to Arizona, Hello? where it's really Sources hot been, out, and they end up playing in a dome where it's air conditioned. <laughs> where I've watched games your, at before. And that led you to your pick with the Cardinals. <laughs> and now you have intel again that Jordan Love, who, I mean, you know, got injured on the he last play out last of Germany. He, he may have. And hey, you know what? Broken clock is right twice a day. So you might be right on this one. You might have this one right. But even if he does play, I'm not picking him against Brian Flores. Honestly, if he does play, I think that it should it shouldn't help this line at all because mm. of the fact that he's not mobile. Just uh, for all of you nerds and analytics gurus out there, uh, the Packers' offensive line is ranked 25th in the NFL mm. when it comes to pass block win rate. Uh, that is not an ideal number to have attached to an injured young quarterback, quarterback, number one. But number two, a divisional opponent, you're at home, and this team has been firing on all cylinders. Separate but also interesting point, another player that may be making a return to the field would be Jordan Addison. Mm. Uh, if the Vikes can add Jordan to the That's equation— huge with everything that they've already done. Uh, Darnold looking fucking incredible. O'Connell's got the boys rocking and rolling. I think Minnesota uh, is a phenomenal pick here. Um, You can get them, I think, what is it? Plus three is like minus 130. So definitely buy yourself that half point. Um, But outside of that, yeah, obviously we're on the under in this one for the system play. Yeah, I like the under too. Uh, we'll, We'll let that ride. All right, next we are going to another divisional matchup. A lot of divisional matchups this week. Houston is playing host to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Texans looking to bounce back after they got their shit rocked by the Vikings last week. And they are six-point favorites against Trevor Lawrence, who Cerrone has been betting against since he was playing peewee football. Six points, it's a lot of points for a divisional matchup. Take but ten. Have the Jaguars given you anything Take to believe in? Ten. <laughs> here we go all right alt spread i, I alt mean spread against doug peterson that's what cerrone likes yeah i dude i yeah and i like i like stroud in a bounce back game i like the texans in a bounce back game and betting against the jags has been the easiest money i've ever made for the past two years um i know it's a division matchup i is it in, i assume it's in jacksonville it's in houston it's in houston oh I don't have to say on to you, Caps. Give me, give me the Texans minus six. Um, that that should be. I love that. I'm I'm on Jags money line. Wow! Oh, Holy, there shit. we go. All right, let's go mix ahead, it air up. it out. Uh, I don't know if you guys recall the numbers that I just read previously. Do you not want the six points? You, you, team, you want no, you I'm, want money I'm line? taking the six. Have points. you watched okay. Trevor? Yes, I Play? have. It's abysmal. It is abysmal. Um, but. You're you're looking too much into the eye test and not enough into the numbers with the NFL. Oh, the go. NFL is the numbers. Here comes baby. Nostradamus. Uh, Fifteen he, and two. Listen, he's got the numbers. If you're is this the under, biggest? Slug? If you're an yeah. underdog of five and a half points or more, you are fifteen and two against the spread, and you are ten and five straight up. Just said that stat to open up this pod. I'm not backing away from it. I did bet on Jacksonville last week, and I did regret it. It was the only one that we missed, six and one. I think I'll I'll do it again. Like I I'm not worried about it. I think the fact that this is a divisional game makes it even better for Jacksonville. Um, and I also think honestly, Houston looks sleepy. Mm. If that's if that's the right word, like I think it is. Balls. I don't think we're DJ Stroud close. doing too many podcasts. Yeah, him and cocky. Micah both. Him and Micah both. Um, but I, I don't think Houston is going to turn it on until closer to the halfway point in the year, and that's when they're really going to start to pull away mm. and really take out um, a lead in this division. But until then, uh, sticking with the numbers and trusting in Las Vegas because the public is also hammering the shit out of Houston, uh, pushing it for 
sharp movements have pushed it up to this six and a half number. Um, and then from a bet percentage, 73% of bets according to Action Network are actually going through. Uh, and they're all on Houston, but 46% of the money on Jacksonville. So interesting. Uh, I like that edge. Allow me a respectful rebuttal. Please. 15 and two against the spread, correct? For when it's what, five and a half or more? Five and a half or more, correct. Okay. We talked about this earlier this week, or maybe it was last week. But, you know, the first few weeks of the season now have essentially replaced the preseason, I think. And to your point about the Texans being sleepy, you know, Stroud didn't play at all in the preseason. Maybe he played a half, maybe he played two. I'm not sure. But he's, you know, developing the chemistry. The defense is out there. I think that that sleepiness was awoken in Minnesota. They knew that that game, I mean, they probably shouldn't have won that game, but I think 34-7 to is just fucking embarrassing for a team that considers themselves to be not just like a playoff contender, but a title contender. Like, they have just as good a chance as anybody other than Kansas City to, you know, make the conference title game, right? Like, that's their expectation for themselves. And then my other argument here would be Doug Peterson. uh, Coaching. You know, solid enough coach, won a Super Bowl in Philadelphia when he had a supremely talented team. I think D'Amico Ryans is a hell of a coach compared to him. And again, I, I love the formula of betting on a, if you have a significant advantage in the quarterback room and the head coaching room, I'm going to take that probably eight times out of 10 when I like those two more. And what happened to Trevor Lawrence, Caps? Because he was the prince who was promised coming out of Clemson. And he's had splashy plays. And there are a lot of football nerds out there that I follow on Twitter that are constantly coming to his defense and I, I try to defend him to a certain extent, but it's getting really fucking hard to. It's, it seems like he's just in his own head. Confidence. Like, I, I think confidence is huge for sure if you're a quarterback in 100%. the NFL, if you're a pitcher in baseball, if you're a kicker, uh, another one too. Like, the, the way that you carry yourself, the way that you approach, you know, prep. Never seen that guy games. smile. No, never. Uh, not since college. Um, I, I don't know if he just doesn't mesh as well with Doug. And they or they paid he, him too. Yeah. I don't know why they paid him. So much. Um, I, I do think that T-Law will improve not only this year, but year over year to the point where he, he'll be a top eight quarterback at some point in his career. But y- you see it a lot, dude, especially with these guys that are winning Heisman awards. Um, maybe not Jaden Daniels, but I mean, Caleb is kind of taking his medicine early. Uh, you, you notice he doesn't look nearly as athletic as he used to. Like the game is just so much faster so at much the faster. NFL level. The windows are so much smaller for you to put yep. a ball into. Uh, everything is so meticulous and calculated that if you're a guy that historically is more of an improviser or somebody that's able to create plays, you don't really have that opportunity at the professional level, unless you're like Lamar or right. somebody that's just or Daniels, right? We talked about that Daniels earlier this week too. It's like yeah. Caleb was a, a really good athlete in college, but mm-hmm. that really gets taken away once you get to the NFL and it might not even be good anymore. It might just be a pretty good athlete versus elite athletes like Josh Allen, Lamar, Jaden Daniels. They can separate themselves. Anthony Richardson with their mobility versus Caleb. It's like he has pocket mobility, certainly, but that pocket is crumbling way too quickly. Same thing that applies to Trevor. He's a good athlete, but he's not a spectacular athlete. So he's not going to be able to evade, you know, the Daniel Hunters and Will Andersons of the world. That's why I like using Micah him. Parsons. Yeah. TJ right. Watt. Let's move yep. into TJ Watt's game this weekend, a, a game that I love. The Steelers are one and a half point favorites in Indianapolis against the Colts. Mike Tomlin and this defense, I think, how many points has this defense allowed so far this year? Captures it 16. Do I have that correct? It's, it's not a lot. Of it's not a lot of points. That. They're going up against Anthony Richardson, who sprays the ball like a fucking four-year-old with a squirt gun that what? just took Adderall. Like Petey with a squirt gun. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like Petey with a squirt gun, sure. Steelers are favored by one and a half in Indianapolis. I am hammering Pittsburgh here. Over-under set at 39 and a half or 40, depending on where you can get it. Yeah, I mean, I'll take the under, too. I'm I'm not sure. And you know what? Justin motherfucking Fields, second favorite quarterback in the league. Love him to death. So happy for him doing this well. 
I hope they continue to give him the starting job. I don't even think it's a conversation really anymore at this point. Mm-hmm. They can start out 4-0. Oh. I mean, we said it last week. If they can start out 3-0, oh, he's the starter. He's established. Yeah, he can't he feels good in this oh. offense. Uh, I like Pittsburgh a lot. And, I mean, the leaders in the AFC North right now, it smells like bitch in here. <laughs> it it really does, dude. I think There's a lot of bitch. I'm bitch. The, the, under is, <laughs> the under is the play in this game for the record. Um I can tell you that with certainty because Cerrone, what is Lamar against Pittsburgh as a mobile quarterback? What's his record? It's probably like one and four. It's not good. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Richardson is obviously a bigger bodied man. Um, But if there's a team that is literally built to shut down a mobile quarterback, it is the Pittsburgh Steelers. I know that we don't have Highsmith, but for those of you that watched last week, uh, Nick Herbig, uh, another Wisconsin outside linebacker. His yep. brother is actually an offensive lineman. He's a backup for the team. Uh, and he already has like his signature move. Um, he gets under, he rips, and then he pretty much is carbon copied TJ's signature, like swat over the top on the back shoulder of the quarterback. Oh, I've seen that the, too many times. Yeah. He did it last week, and I'm excited to watch him continue to do that. I don't think that this is necessarily the game where he's going to sneak up behind Anthony Richardson, but the Steelers will make Indianapolis throw the ball. Uh, and like Ralph just said, uh, that's not the the way to win ball games. If you are an Indianapolis team starting Anthony Richardson at quarterback, you're trying to have the game develop with a little bit more balance yep. um, and on the Steelers side, dude, like fields has really just impressed me so much with his ability to not make mistakes. Like that's honestly all you have to do right now. If you're a quarterback for the Steelers, I think that's been, well, they only have to score one point to win. Right. Like much. It, you just have to be a glorified game manager. Uh, Big Ben was doing it. Uh, damn near in a wheelchair towards the end of his career, and we still were going over 500 every year. Devlin Hodges, the undrafted rookie free duck. agent slash duck caller, um, dating Laney Wilson. For those of you who don't know that, uh, really, really, wow. interesting. yeah, Good he's for doing him. well for himself. Doing well for himself. He was actually the last Steelers quarterback to go three and O in their first three starts uh, with the, with the Steelers. So there's a little piece of wow. trivia. Justin Field, uh, an important company with Devlin Hodges. Uh, Cerrone, what do you like in this game? I mean, I don't think I've ever picked the Steelers uh, just out of spite. Um, the only thing that's making me lean towards Indy is I feel like the Steelers lose games that they're supposed to win. Um, yep, you know, which kind of scares me a little bit, but for the the sake of the you know the pod yeah i'll I'll go Steelers i like we talked about last week, I lost God, we were all so high on Anthony Richardson, um, and we're all just fools from watching those three games last year of him just being a star, and God has all that came out the window, and yeah, I don't i it's gonna get ugly uh, on the offensive line for indy um. I, there's just I don't know if it's gonna be a low scoring game. Maybe he throws it. Maybe he connects on a couple bombs, um, you know, and they maybe keep it close. But other than that, he's kind of just shooting from the hip, and you can't really shoot from the hip against a three and zero Pittsburgh team. To kind of tie like what you guys both said together, like you just don't want to rely on explosives if you're an offense. It's almost yeah, impossible exactly. to rely on explosives, and that is the most important part of his game at this point. Like it's rushing as a quarterback get in extra blocker uh and yeah airing it the fuck out to alec pierce and i'm not sure he's gonna have the time to air the fuck out to alec pierce when he has tj watt breathing down his goddamn neck all right if he does if he does get that ball off minka fitzpatrick's waiting so my goat love minka all right um the denver broncos are traveling to jersey technically to play the new york jets the Jets are favored at home by seven and a half points against Denver. This boils down to Sean Payton versus Robert Sala for me. Again, I'm just going to go with the coach here. 
I obviously love Aaron Rodgers, and I think he's much better quarterback than Bo Nix. But Sean Payton's offense versus Robert Sala's defense, which has been, which was better last week, we should note. And they're coming off of what? 10 days of rest. They played last Thursday against the Patriots team. I think they're high on their own supply. I think the Jets win the game, but I think the Broncos cover plus seven and a half here. Bo Nix looked good last week, finally. He did. Um, and this is awful that I'm going to swing it, but um, I think the Jets are the real deal, man. I mm. think this game. I think this game starts and ends a lot like it did with the Patriots. I think if Rodgers can play his way, he's a top five quarterback, maybe even top three quarterback in the league. Um, the, the defense is is playing great. Um, I think I just see Rodgers make these throws and and he's running for like he ran for like I saw him pick up like an eleven yard first down against the Patriots. Um, if he's playing like that, man, if he's playing the game that he wants to play, I think the Jets are fucking right up there uh, in the AFC um, just because of the talent. And then, yeah, Bo Nix, love, loved what I saw of him, you know, out of the against the Bucks. But I think this game ends a lot like the Patriots game where it's like a, a 24 to 7 or something like that. I think if, if they can play their game, the Jets will put them, you know, to, to sleep. Plus, it's in New York or New Jersey. So I like that as well. Unfortunately for all Garrett Wilson fantasy owners, I am one of them. Patrick Sertan uh, followed Mike Evans last week in Tampa Bay on 24 of 34 routes, down. according to the Next Gen Stats. He allowed one reception for eight yards. That is going to be a fascinating matchup to see if he applies the same strategy to Garrett Wilson. And if he does, it's going to be a long day for Garrett Wilson. So maybe look at the Alan Lazard props. Take a peek yep. at Mike Williams if you have to. Uh, Brees Hall famously had his best game as a professional running back against the Broncos a couple of years ago, where I think he ended up rushing for like 165 yards. It was kind of his coming out party. That was in Denver at mile high, but now they're playing at home in New York. Uh, what do you like your couch? Yeah, I I think on top of what you just said, the Broncos are fourth in the NFL right now uh, in pressure rate with mm. 30.6% being that number, and they're blitzing 45.6% of the time Ooh, as well, aggressive. which is league, league high, uh, more than more than Blitzburg even. Um, and I, I get that Rodgers looks good, but he's – generally immobile like i i don't think that's a crazy thing for me to say uh he's gonna be getting the ball out quick so i love braylon allen in this game if you're a fantasy owner but from a prop perspective you guessed it i'm on another tight end baby but this time it's receptions made tyler conklin over two and a half receptions you can get that on DraftKings right now cash it all right um, he played well too yeah, he's positioned well to be the safety valve in this game in particular. Uh, Denver has allowed the 10th most receptions and an 83.3% catch rate to tight ends so far this season. Uh, that would include 13 catches from tight ends the last two weeks. And uh, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but that would be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Pittsburgh Steelers, neither of those teams have dominant tight ends at all. They're just two teams that are more than willing to check the ball down. I Put some respect on Darnell Washington's name. Um, I love Darnell. What did you have on the spread here, Caps? So I'm sticking with my guns. Seven and a half is too many points in an NFL game. Um, and 15 and two ATS. Uh, so yeah, I was going to say that one also follows the system. Yep. Yep. Definitely. <clears throat> definitely looking at the Broncos plus seven and a half. The public is also dick riding the Jets early, so that's two big factors for me there. And then I definitely am going to lean the under in this one as well because the public is way, way too invested in the over at thirty nine and a half at time of recording. One other point about this game, this is a quote-unquote Nate Hackett revenge game. I think he's going to try to get a little bit cutesy with the offensive play calling. Obviously, the offensive coordinator for the Jets right now, former head coach in Denver. Uh, yeah, he's just not that good of a play caller. It all depends on Rodgers. He cans everything that 
he fucking calls anyways. All right, next game we have playoff rematch. Eagles got their asses kicked by this team in the playoffs last year. They're going to Tampa Bay to play the Buccaneers, and the Eagles are favored by one and a half points in Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay looking to bounce back. This is the last game of the noon slate. So we have eight games during the noon slate, four games in the afternoon slate, one game Sunday night, two games Monday night. Again, Eagles, Bucks. Eagles are favored by one and a half. I like Tampa here. I don't know how the Eagles are going to facilitate offense outside of Saquon without A.J. Brown, who I think is still marked as out, and Devontae Smith. I mean, those are... Like it's like mm-hmm. essentially like taking like two legs out from underneath the table. It's just gonna tip the fuck over, dude. Like you have to have those guys. Like I think Devontae is an elite wide receiver. I love him to death, and I like AJ Brown a lot. I, I respect him and I get it. But I think even missing Devontae is so crucial. That's a guy who demands nine, ten, eleven targets a game. So much pressure on the defense. And I think Sirianni and Kellen Moore are Dang. going to have their hands full with Todd Bowles and his defense. Todd Bowles is looking for a revenge game because after I hyped him up last week, he had his shit rocked by Bo Nix and Sean Payton. Wow. Uh, Bo Nix and Sean Payton are very different beasts than I, I don't believe in Jalen Hurts. I don't think he's a very good quarterback. We talked about it at the beginning of the pod, NFC East. They beat up on each other. I think they go down south and they get their shit rocked. So I'll take the Bucks money line. Yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll take Tampa as well. I think with those two guys out, um, I mean, Saquon is so fucking good. Still. He's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And I hope that that like huge 65, I think it's like a 65, 55 yard run in the middle of just the most stagnant game of all time should like shake up to whoever's calm. Yeah. The Philly to defeat him. But with those two guys out, that's brutal. And then, yeah, we, the Eagles have just been, I don't feel comfortable betting on the Eagles the past two years. They just can't fucking figure it out and with no help because we were even talking about it last week outside of AJ Brown and Smith. You, I don't think you can even name who like is starting on the Eagles as far as the receivers. Um, okay. Okay. Um, and the, I mean, after that though, who the fuck <laughs> just shook I that mean, the fuck off. Yeah, you're right. Okay. That's the right hey, response. Jahan Dotson's your starting yeah. receiver this week. Good luck. buddy. Hey, yeah. It's just, um, and yeah, well, I just, I just don't think they, they figured out, I, I would never feel comfortable betting on them. Um, and yeah, you would want to kind of lead towards Philly cause they got embarrassed by them in the playoffs, but no, I'll take Baker with his in in his mouth thrown for fucking 300. Screw it. Yeah, dude, he had, you know, off week, you're going to got against, you know, PS2, um, that shit happens, right? But first two weeks of the season, um, lighting it up as like a couple of AFC North aficionados between Cerrone and myself. Is there anything better than watching Deshaun Watson in a Bears or not Bears Browns uniform? I mean, this guy might have the most Beautiful. historical like fall off I've ever seen. Um, if he's not getting a non-consensual hand job in a massage parlor, apparently he can't throw he's a not pass ready. Uh, or stay in the pocket. Uh, I bet he wishes a, a masseuse would stay in his pocket. But outside of that, um, ever Baker since that halftime so good. of the ever since halftime of that AFC Chiefs game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They're up twenty-four to zero. They blow it and. Deshaun, yeah, Deshaun has just been. It's like Mahomes took his soul from him and never gave it, it back. It's it's a dark, dark place to be. But yeah, I think Sirianni might be approaching worst like game time decision coach in the NFL. He literally single handedly lost them the game against Atlanta by throwing a pass uh, when their opponent had no timeouts. Uh, they had, what was it, a minute 20, minute 40 was on the clock. Uh, you could pretty much run that thing down to 20 to 30 seconds and you know kind of ice it. But he had to get greedy. He had to get cocky. Nick Sirianni is the most typical, like, pick-me guy. Like, he did not have a good time in high school, in my opinion. 
uh, based on his personality today. Um, he's above average in terms of looks. So as far as NFL head coaches go, he's way too confident and cocky. I think uh, he kind of looks like a dweeb. I think he I, has I think he does face. too. A hundred percent. Like he Don't thinks he's hot, but like, yeah. at the, and you know, he, his quarterback's Jalen Hurts, who's actually hot. And he's like, yeah. well, I'm as hot as Jalen Hurts. Maybe I'll stand Go up on. to him today. But it's like, no, dude, you can't stand up to that guy. He's the hot guy in the locker room. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand how the Eagles aren't competing with the best of the best. There is so much it's talent. It, it has, there, there's no other way to describe so good. the mismanagement of talent at every position on this team. Like, they literally have George's defense plus Cooper DeGene. Uh, Blankenship has looked off uh, since making his entrance into Philly. Like everything just looks off about this defense. They don't look as physical as they used to. They don't yep. look as hungry or as aggressive. Um, and then on the offensive side of the ball too, I think AJ Brown might be the best wide receiver in the NFL. That's a very hot take. Uh, he is so fucking good and he's oh. so fun to watch. And he makes Jalen Hurts look like an elite passer. Like yes. Megatron. Yep. He has the same effect as Megatron. He's just not the same body and corners are bigger and faster. But outside of that, you're not only missing potentially him. I know he's questionable right now, but like Ralph said, Devontae not looking great. Um, I don't think historically Saquon won that many games by himself with the Giants. Uh, and that's kind of what you're looking at again here in my mind is the New York Giants five years ago, four years ago, uh, are playing against a modern day Todd Bowles. And I know they're going to run it. So, yeah. So, well, that yeah, should be the game plan. They just... should put it in Saquon's hands 30 to 35 times in this game. And Sirianni's going to try to prove to the world that, you know, him and Kellen Moore have created great passing concepts. And they're going to maximize Jalen Hurts. When I don't think Jalen Hurts is a very good NFL quarterback, I think he's supremely overrated. I think, like Cap just said, AJ Brown makes him better. He elevates. Mm -hmm. him. He's one of those receivers. There are receivers out there, you know, Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson, Malik Neighbors, AJ Brown, Antonio Brown, and Antonio his Brown in his prime, Megatron. They're quarterback proof. It doesn't matter who's behind center. You're going to get find a way to give him the fucking ball. Okay, and Jahan Dotson is definitely not that dude. And it's that simple. No. All He's right. A Penn uh, State uh, slot wide receiver. So, yeah. For the record, though, Bucks yep. and the under. I got uh, it. Man. Let's just keep it rolling. All right. Next game, we have the highest over of the weekend. It's the Commanders going to the Cardinals. This is the first game that will kick off in the afternoon slate. The Cardinals are favored at home by three and a half points. Vegas is not overreacting to the Jane Daniels experience, or maybe they are. Maybe the line was at five or six before they ended up going to Cincinnati and beating them. Fun game between two electric quarterbacks. Kyler kind of had an off week last week against the Lions, but I mean, he looked great in the first half. Not at, quite as good in the second half, but still looks solid. Um, God, I don't know what I like here, man. This is a tough one. Three and a half points. I like the cards. Okay. I like, I think the cards have played good teams very well. They played. They gave the Lions a lot of trouble. They gave the Bills the first uh, great game point. of the season a lot of trouble. Um, I think. I mean, yeah, that was awesome for Jaden Daniels to go out and and ball out Monday night and beat the Bengals. Um, but I think they fall back down to earth a little bit. And uh, I, the Cardinals are better than I thought going into the season. Um, I have a lot of Arizona friends, um, so I was just constantly getting, you know. People on them, people loving them, people rooting for them. I just couldn't see it, but they, they definitely surprised me. Um, Kyler's looking a lot better than I thought. Um, and I think at home, too, they, they just, uh, yeah. I think the commanders come back down to earth and, and the Cardinals take care of business. Um, and I think a lot of the public, too, will overreact and love the commanders to where mm -hmm. I don't think it was really anything crazy. You played against a Bengals defense that was, I mean, that couldn't stop a nosebleed, for Christ's sake. No. To the same point, though, the Cardinals defense, I mean, they actually did a pretty good job against Detroit. But, you know, that game against Buffalo week one, like that's a boat race. Like You got to keep up points-wise. They weren't stopping mm -hmm. 
them. This is a Kingsbury a, revenge game. I think one. I'll apply the same philosophy that I did with Hackett and the Jets. He might try to get a little bit too cute going back to Arizona. I'll go with the Cardinals as well, even though everything in my heart is telling me to ride this Jaden Daniels train. I'll go with the Cardinals by three and a half. I think that's all right. Yeah, it 100%. I'm with you guys there. Um, I'm actually going to do a first quarter spread for the Cardinals, though, instead of the full game, and here's why. Uh, the Cardinals have been one of the best starters out of the gate in yeah. all of the NFL. They got 28 total first quarter points, and they've allowed seven. Uh, they have the fourth best EPA per dropback versus allowing the 32nd ranked EPA. So they're coming out hot. Um, the commanders are also coming out hot uh, after upsetting Cincinnati. I don't think it was that much of an upset, but Vegas did. So here nor there, but you got the commanders playing another road game. That's you can't overlook, you know, back to back weeks on the road playing in Arizona on a short week. Uh, this is a letdown spot for a team that, for all intents and purposes, no one probably saw them being two and one. I feel like this is the script that the Bears were hoping for, and that the Commanders were expecting to be more in that zero oh, and three, one and two camp. They're outperforming. Expectations are way higher than they should be this early in Jaden Daniels' career, but. Uh, the public is like you uh, made the assumption there. Mr. Cerrone, you're pretty spot on. 58% of the public is riding on Washington, but 65% of the money is actually on Arizona right now. Love That's that. a huge number when you have five different sharp movements that have pushed this line to where it's at because it opened up actually uh, at two and a half. Yep. So the, the line has only gotten better for Arizona, but um, another player prop for this one, fellas, uh, anytime touchdown. How about Michael Wilson? Uh, plus 260. He's coming off a 65-yard performance on nine targets last week. Uh, it was Ooh. the first time that Arizona had to pass, truthfully, when uh, they got up early versus Buffalo in week one. Big, big early lead in week two against the Rams. Yep. Um, yep. But Michael Wilson was looking at a 27% target share last week against Detroit, and he had 100% route participation on 34 dropbacks from Kyler. Uh, he also did have a five yard touchdown grab yep. week one for, for those of you that were dialed into red zone with. I think me, it might have been their uh, first touchdown of the season. I, I think it was, um, yep. but even more so, right? That that makes his point that much better that he has a role in the red zone with this offense, even with Marvin Harrison Jr. stepping in. Michael Wilson is still a guy that you should take note of or be aware of because if you put too much attention elsewhere, that, yep. that's where they get you, apparently. Yeah. So uh, each opponent that has faced or sorry each opponent that has had a secondary wide receiver score touchdown versus the travesty that is the Washington Commanders secondary secondary uh, so bad you're looking at Chris Godwin Jalen McMillan mm. Wandale Robinson yep. Andre Cephas, and with Trey McBride being a DNP yep. and Mark Harrison limited I think this is about as good of a play as you're going to have for uh, oh, ATD yeah. going into this one. So go ahead. Maybe sprinkle some Dorch in there too. I don't mind that. I love Dorch. I what love Dorch. On a, on a, yeah. Get fucking Dorched. That's one of my favorite tweets that goes around. A bunch of football <laughs> nerds always streak. You just got Dorched. And it's just a Dorch highlight. <laughs> um, all right. I'm giving us 90 seconds to talk through Patriots 49ers. 90 seconds, because Daddy has a That's meeting in the much. morning, and there's a couple of other games that I want to spend a little bit more time on. 90 seconds. Niners are favored. Wait, I have to put the clock on. A lot. You want to take a guess at how much they're favored by? I think it's 10. It is 10 and a half. Very good job by you. You're adjusting. Yeah, you can I'll, I'll yourself. start off. I'll take, I'll take Pats plus 10. I did it against the Bengals. 
Um, I, I think the 49ers are a little bit of fraudulent alert with Purdy back there. And uh, I obviously see him, see him see out. I don't think Debo's playing either. I think 10 points is, is doable. I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'm going Niners by 10 and a half along with the under of 41. I don't believe in the Patriots offense. I don't think they can score enough points. Caps, you have 55 seconds. Let it rain. I'm not even going to explain myself on this one. I've done it enough times already. Uh, give me the Pats plus 10 and a half and give me the under. System, baby. Fuck your system. I am the system. Next game. We're spending 90 seconds on this one as well. Restarting the clock. The Browns are going to Vegas to play the Raiders in a matchup between two of the best edge rushers in football. The edge rusher is not named TJ Watt. The Raiders are favored by one and a half points against the Browns, so you can get the Browns at plus two across some books. I am going to take the Browns at plus two just because I think they have more talent on both sides of the ball. I think it's that simple. Is Miles playing? I feel like he got – did he get hurt? Maybe not. Um – yeah, give me the Browns. Um, is I don't. It's weird that I still have a little bit of faith in the Browns. At the end of the day, yeah, I think they're going to eat Minshew up alive. And yet then at the end of the day, if you can just give Deshaun a little bit of time, he's got fucking Cooper and Jerry Judy, and those guys can catch. Um, to them, just to, again, it's pretty much a pick them to win. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take the Browns. Talk to you know what? I, Caps, I'll, I'll give I you 40 not. seconds here. I'm going to go with the Raiders, actually, one and a half. I just decided they're a better vibes team. They just have way better vibes than the Browns. I'm just going to go purely based off vibes. I'm completely extracting the science Valid. from my take. Caps, you have 28 seconds. Yeah, I, I hate the Browns. Um, I love to watch them lose, and I think they're going to do it a lot this year, especially without Chubb. Deshaun is so fucking bad. Give me the Raiders, Antonio Pierce claims to be making business decisions we'll see i'm a gardner Minshew stan i always will love gardner I do uh, like give him. me the under give me the under in this one as well i feel like that's a pretty safe play boom right at 90 perfect okay the under in that game was for the record 37 and a half too high yep i like that a lot all right, uh, a game that i actually want to talk about if justin herbert is available uh division rival Chargers plus seven and a half against the Chiefs at home. Eesh. It should be noted that they have probably them and the Rams are the two worst home fan bases, home advantages in the NFL because nobody in Los Angeles cares about the NFL for some reason because they're all fucking busy smoking dope and hanging out and surfing. Uh, Being gay. The Chiefs are three and oh, but like not a really impressive three and oh. They're going to win this game, I think. Uh, but I'm going to take the Chargers plus seven and a half, and I feel like an idiot taking that. I yeah, reserve the right to change the spread. I reserve the right to change my pick, though, if Justin Herbert is not playing this weekend. I want that to be said on the record. Okay, if Easton it's, Stick or whoever the fuck is playing quarterback for Jim Harbaugh, I'm taking the Chiefs. But I believe in Herbert enough to keep it within seven. I'll I'll take I'll take the Chiefs. Um, I don't think Herbert. That looks pretty looked pretty bad and he wasn't supposed to play um that game but they played him and then re-injured it high ankle sprain i remember i saw this picture of his ankle you could see it swelling outside of the sock yeah like it was pretty bad and i think yeah there's no faith in in easton stick and then also yeah it's weird because of course the chiefs are three now because why not but they have it's not an impressive three now and, and maybe they wake up a little bit this week and get Kelsey back in the rotation and, and figure some things in out. But yeah, I just can't take, I don't think Herbert's playing. I, I think they're going to maybe think we're going to lose this game anyways. Let's rest you. Let's not be an idiot about this and make you play again when you shouldn't and re-aggravate something. Um, and yeah, at the end of the day, it's the Chiefs, right? You know, you're playing against those guys and also the two referees, which are, I mean, undefeated at this point. So. Yeah, very simply, give me give me the Chiefs, give me Kansas City. Capture one. I'm I'm sticking with Harbaugh. Give me the give me the Chargers in this one. Give me a J.K. Dobbins anytime touchdown. It's at plus one sixty somehow at bet three sixty five. The fact the fact that you can get, I mean, he looks like what every Baltimore fan thought he was going to look like, yeah. but just never 
never got the opportunity and that's unfortunate. That but, uh, I don't know. Is Easton stick going to be the guy or is it Taylor Heineke? You're right. It's Heineke. Oh, uh, I love Heineke. Was, I, <laughs> that changes yeah. a lot for, he's a does it? He, that, he did. I want to go chargers now. If is that he's, is it a confirmed? I love Heineke. It's either I mean, Heineke. He is the back end. It's not Easton Stick. We're all in the Chargers. It, oh my God! The Chiefs are going by like thirty five now. <laughs> it's plus plus a touchdown though. They're I I get it. Like they don't have a home field advantage because they barely have a home field, but they're not traveling right. Uh, Kansas City is kind of just we called Houston the sleepy team. Right, I think Kansas City's hungover. Like they, <laughs> yeah, they're just and like somehow still three and zero, man. It's yeah, fucked. like a lot of. I mean, the refs love to help them out. Don't don't get me wrong. Like, oh, you don't gotta tell me that twice. It, you know, it's very very critical calls that are either missed or called in their favor. Uh, but the problem with betting against games. them is that it's so exhausting having to root against them because it's oh, like it's frustrating. It, it it's almost inevitable that Mahomes is going to make a play or they're going to get the right flag. It's just gotten to that point where it, this happened with the Warriors. You're too. saying this after you bet against them. <laughs> after I bet <laughs> against them, but it, it happened with the Warriors where it's like you know they have Oracle Arena and Arrowhead is you know the modern day Oracle now. And it's like Steph is going to hit a timely three. They're not going to call a moving screen on Bogut or Draymond. They're just going to be able to get away with whatever the fuck they want. They have the best coach in the league. It just it, it's so infuriating, man. Let's ride fuck Chargers. It. We ride. Let's, let's ride. Chargers. Give me Heineke and that little. He's a he's a feisty little guy. He and, is. Uh, yeah, they got Harbaugh and, and J.K. It's a, it's a very different Chargers team. Yeah, well, well fuck it. The Chiefs I, have I to think... lose at some point. Or just I, I also think that people are underestimating how much better this Chargers defense has looked Facts. with Harbaugh stepping in. Yep. Like they are ranked second in preventing points in the red zone, second in preventing first downs, uh, sixth in total rush yards allowed, eighth in yards per play, seventh in forced turnovers. Squad. Uh, I think I mean, Joe going down, from though, which, like going which from like Brandon he, Staley to Jim Harbaugh, we've talked about this before, is like going from your drunk dweeb of a stepdad to like, oh, now my mom's dating a principal. Jason and he fucking him. benches like 325 and he kicks ass. Oh, it's and like, what did he do? He actually kicked my other stepdad's ass in order to win my mother's hand. It's like he's just so much better to be in my life. I'll call that guy daddy. Oh, it's, it's truthfully it is truthfully a reverse it's a reverse mormon conversion where you go from <laughs> being like yeah joseph smith is the guy to you turn around and jesus christ is standing there and he's like this guy's what handsome. are you doing he's yeah. like just follow me i'm the way i'm the truth i'm the life and i love guys that love football uh that's essentially the scenario a beautiful way to put it beautiful all right we're on the charges baby I, i'm kind of pumped about the charges now so that's kind of got my fire also, lit. Now we're going into probably the game of the weekend. Uh, oh, yeah. One of those closest to Cerrone's heart. Sunday night football. This is an awesome game. You know, we only get to see these teams play. It feels like once every two or three years. They don't Great play game. every year. They should play every year. Buffalo Bills going into Baltimore to play the Ravens. The line is adjusted from Ravens one and a half up to Ravens by two and a half. Over under a set at 46 and a half. And I hate to break it to you, Mikey. Josh Allen is the motherfucking man. I love Lamar to death. I love Lamar to death. Let me get that out of the way. Um, sure. I sure. think Josh Allen's a better quarterback, and I'm going to rock with the Buffalo Bills here, plus two and a half. Bills have not played anyone good yet this year. They will get exposed. Play the Cardinals and we week will one. run the ball. Yep, and they, they went under 20, I think it was 20 to zero uh, very quickly. Um, bounce back and one. Just, so they've been kicking ass the last ten quarters of football. Dolphins, yeah, I mean, Jaguars, listen, the shit out of bad teams. That's what if, good teams if do. If I wasn't, if I wasn't a Ravens fan, I would take the the Bills here. But I am a Ravens <laughs> fan, and I think that we're gonna run the ball down their throat. Derrick Henry looked like everything we wanted when when we signed him. Um. 
even you got guys like Justice Hill picking up 10, 15 yards. You got Lamar on a busted play, doesn't know where to throw the ball. What does he do? He accidentally runs and gets 10 yards. That would suck. I think the 0-2 start really lit a fire under our ass, and we know how big of a game this is. AFC playoff implications, you know, the bad start with the Ravens. We're at the fucking bank. We fucking, when we're at the bank, we let you come in. Okay, we let you fucking diddle yourself. We lock the door. We beat the fuck out of you. You try to exit the door. The door's locked. You come back in. We beat the fuck out of you again. Then we let you out. Okay? And what does Lamar do? Under the bright light, Sunday night, Monday night, he shines, baby. And we're going to shock the world and beat the Bills. Where I know we're favorited, but with the start we had, didn't look like it for a little bit there. Give me the Ravens. Minus two and a half. Give me the Ravens fucking minus five. I was going to say 10, but uh, we started off on two. So, yeah, um, um, that's my take. Yeah, that's it. Let's go for, in, I'm juice for this fucking game. Yeah, Ravens are winning this by a touchdown. Um, here's, here's why. The Bills, to Cerrone's point, haven't really played anyone other than the Cardinals, in which they had to come back to win. They did not cover. Uh, the one six and a half spread should not have won that game. Um, they then go and play a then to a list Miami Dolphins yep. team that I mean they're they're just oh, trying to not drown out there essentially. Uh, just, and then the week after that is thumb. they play Trey at Lawrence. home against the most down bad Jacksonville has looked in years. Um, I do think that that's kind of what will spur the Jaguars to turn things around. But through the first three weeks, it like the Jags and the Bengals look so lost. Same thing with the Dolphins without Tua. Like, how do you not have a better plan B for a guy that has 19 concussions in the last four <laughs> weeks? But um, That's such a great point. I just don't understand it. Uh, it's like buying a 1948 fucking Pontiac, whatever the hell, and just being like, yeah, I don't need that warranty. You can keep it. Like, we'll just... I got my know. bicycle out back yeah. by the garage. Like, I can always you know, drive that. Yeah, I'll I'll just steal a horse or something. I don't know, but... Um, <laughs> do you know that Lamar has, through three games apiece between the Bills and the Ravens, Lamar is 70 more passing yards yeah. than Josh Allen. He's been slinging. I, we, we shouldn't be losing. I mean, I could talk about this for hours, but I did know that. He's he also plays, five I think we have, or four less touchdowns and one more interception. We also didn't play the fucking Jags. Yeah. You I played mean, the Raiders. Has anyone? And you lost to the Raiders. All right. All right. For the record, Raiders are one of those teams that could beat anyone or lose to anyone, and they've proven agree with that it statement. through three weeks. They, and it turns out the Ravens are Baltimore too. They could won. beat anybody and they could lose to anybody. I mean, they beat the shit out of the Cowboys last week by three whole points after letting the Cowboys back into the game. Uh, Should have beat that the was Chiefs. Weird, yeah. Let you're you're preaching to the choir, man. You, yeah. you could, I saw a tweet today. If you Google the worst team in the NFL, the answer comes up and it says the Ravens in the fourth quarter. Trust me, man. <laughs> I've been living it for fucking 28 years. Okay. Now, here's, here's where. The Ravens, if they just gain any form of an identity on defense, they become a 3-0 and team, seemingly overnight. Uh, on offense, they have all, like, their worst statistical category, other than total points scored, which is 24th, is third down conversions. Mm -hmm. They rank 11th. Everything else, they're top 10. Most things, they're actually top three. Uh, but on the defensive side of the ball, just they out of have curiosity, two... where does Buffalo rank in those categories? I'd be curious. I'll tell you on what, offense, Buffalo's O line. Yeah. I mean, Josh I'll, Allen had hours. In the I'll pocket. send a screenshot. I'll send a screenshot because the offense versus offense rankings for these are really interesting. Buffalo actually has they're ranked 29th in points, uh, but second red zone efficiency, 10th. For the Ravens, mm. 10th at third down conversions, 11th for the Ravens, 8th in gaining first downs. We're at third 
for the Ravens. Wait, so wait. How the long. hell are the Bills 29th in points? They've scored 34, 31, and 47. No, no, it's, I, think, it's, I think he's saying their defense is allowed. Are you still talking about defense? No, we're talking about their offenses right now. I mean, they've yeah. scored, what, 65? So they've scored 102 points through three games. They're averaging damn near 30. They're averaging 34 points per game. I think it's more of an inef- like an efficiency metric. They're what's inefficient what's about a, then the numbers are stupid because they scored 102 points in three fucking games. And that's my other thing is like uh, Baltimore, like you know, they're typically regarded as an elite defense. I don't think they're an elite yeah, defense anymore. Uh, uh, I think the defensive line lacks pressure. I think Marlon Humphrey is. I like Wiggins a lot. I think he's been pretty good. Wiggins Kyle Hamilton love. is obviously that fucking guy, but I don't think Marlon Humphrey's like a Rope lockdown corner. Uh, obviously, Roquan is my king. But missing Patrick yeah, Humph- Queen, him going to Pittsburgh, I think that's been not crucial necessarily, but it, it's it obvious. It is crucial. Yeah. Like, Pittsburgh's three yeah. now with Queen, and yep. Ravens are one and two without him. Like, he has been a huge piece. He was obviously someone that was yeah, very sucked. vocal for that defense, so... Kyle Hamilton's never going to be that guy, right? He's going to go out and be one of the best safeties in the NFL, but he's not like very vocal. He's not going to be what you need in a in a defense, especially because he is a little bit on the younger side. This is say, where, he's still as a Steelers fan, as a Steelers fan, there's one guy that comes to mind where I was like, if you could put a prime Haloti Nada on this defense, they change overnight. Not Suggs, not Ray Lewis, not Ed Reed. You just need a Haloti Nada to show up and just punch someone in the fucking mouth, break Big Ben's nose, do something. We say that all that, the time. Like, there, there needs to be, like, their defense needs to play like they're in the AFC North or else they're cooked. Yeah, there's there's been some holes this year, for sure. I think... The, when you talk about vocal, I mean, that's that's Rose's job. He's out there screaming, yelling, getting everybody fired up. But, no, definitely holes. We lost uh, some corners. Um, Wiggins played great against CD, uh, even stripped him, got a turnover in the red zone. Um, yeah, I, I think it's not going to be easy out there against the Bills. It's not going to be a this – will, this will not be a cakewalk. It will hopefully for Amer- America's, you know, just – Hopefully it's just a great game. You know, very I mean, few times we just have great pick games. According to Vegas right now, because, you know, we always say two and a half is usually the home line, and they have yeah. the two and a half. So I, I, I agree with that. It's, it's going be, gonna to be a battle. It should be as good as the game as, as when we play against the Chiefs. And this time, I think we, I think we come out um, at home at the bank. We need this one, man. We need this one to get us back, just to prove to everybody that we're still fucking them, them boys. Um, Do you guys want to hear a fun head-to-head stat for these two teams? Yeah, when's that? Last, or I'll let you go, yeah. In their last five games, the last time they played was October 2nd of 2022. It's okay. been a minute. So about two years. Uh, so between their last five games, starting in 2017, ending in 2022. The favorite has won every time. Mm. They're five and zero straight up. The favorite is four and one against the spread, and the under has hit four of the last five times. I was going to ask what what was it at forty forty six? Yeah, I like that under. I think it's going to be a. Uh, this is going to be a gritty. Yeah, this is this. I don't think this will be a flashy game. This will be a very gritty. Derrick Henry, James Cook. Um, I hope Justin Tucker looks him. terrible. Uh, another storyline about this guys. This game is like these are the two best quarterbacks from this draft class, right? This is the Darnold Baker draft class, twenty eighteen. Both later first round picks. I think Lamar was actually the last pick in the first round, and Josh was he was a little bit jagged. later than that. So, um. That that's just another fun storyline to follow too. All right, uh, I'll give us ninety seconds for the Wait first for Monday night game. The Titans and Will Levis are going to Miami to play Skylar Thompson and the Dolphins. And the Dolphins, well, I mean, they have no confidence Dude, in Will me. Levis whatsoever because the Dolphins are favored by a point. Ninety seconds on the clock. I will take Tennessee. I don't believe in. I, I, I actually no, I can't. I literally can't. I cannot bet on Will Levis. I made this rule. I won't do it to myself. 
I'll take Miami. I'll take Mayo, boy. The Dolphins are a mess right now. Mike McDaniel, I think, threw a smoke screen and got us all fooled with his funny catchphrase. They had 13 guys on the field. They had people running while there shouldn't be run. I don't know. Um, no faith in Miami. They look like an absolute mess. Give me Mayo, boy, to go out. And he also, his big coming out game, Will Levis last year, I don't know if you remember, was against Miami. Balled out. They upset him. I think it was Monday night, to be honest. Something like that. You can maybe look it up. But, um, yeah, 90 seconds. Give me, give me Tennessee. Yeah. I'm I'm going to share that same sentiment. It's not going to be often that you see the Titans have an advantage against their opponent at the quarterback position, but it's actually not going to be Skylar Thompson. You're looking at either Tim Is Boyle it Snoop? or Huntley. Tyler Huntley would be uh, potentially the starter. However, he literally just got the playbook last week, so uh, wouldn't expect him to go Thompson. out. But still better than Skylar Thompson. I'm actually I'm on – Or I'll let you finish. I'm on the Dolphins team total under 18 and a half. That is currently at oh, yeah, I love that. Uh, this is just, it's going to be a dumpster fire of a game. Call it there. My, my discretion, if, if Snoop gets the, the nod for the start, I'm all in on Miami. Deal. All right. The real Monday night football game. The Seattle Seahawks are going to Detroit to play the Lions. Where the Lions are favored by three and a half. Seahawks, a sneaky three and zero. Mike McDonald, rookie head coach, starting out three and zero. Geno Smith looking Good like you, Mike. maybe not an MVP candidate, but I don't know. I think he's probably been the best quarterback in that division, even with Kyler. Purdy and Stafford. He's just been fucking lights out. It goes to show how good your offense can be once you get rid of Shane Waldron as your offensive coordinator. Uh, the Bears should be taking notes. Um, we'll take the Seahawks here, plus three and a half. Jackson Smith and Jigba is a goddamn baller. Again, he has been released from the handcuffs of a Shane Waldron led offense. And DK Metcalf, still a hooper. Uh, Charbonnet has been running the ball really well for them. The defense is firing on all fucking cylinders right now. Uh, I love Detroit. Don't get me wrong, but I think three and a half points is a little bit too much. And I don't think there's a, that big of a disparity again, between head coach and quarterback, Geno Smith, Mike McDonald versus Dan Campbell and Jared Goff. So I like the Seahawks here. I think they actually played last year. I'm going to look that up while you guys are going on this. Give me, give me Detroit. Um, let me, let me swing Ashen's way here and give me the lions. The Lions play great under the lights, um, like those night games, the Sunday night games, Monday night games. Um, I think I, I, this is a very tough one because I, I love watching the Seahawks play this year. They're playing great. Um, Jared Goff just got married to an absolute rocket. Confidence through the roof, slinging the ball. I've been all over Jameson Williams this year. Um, I think they settle down the Seahawks. I think they say, hey, you know, you guys, you guys, that was cute to start, uh, but we'll give you, a, you, we'll give you your first loss. I think Dan Campbell, I bet one of his favorite things to do in life, other than fucking just pound his wife, just fucking over and over again, is beat undefeated teams. Like, give me Danny kneecaps and Detroit minus three and a half. It's also a potential three. revenge game for Dan Campbell because they played week two last year and they lost in overtime on a touchdown, 37-31, to 31, the Seahawks won in Detroit last year. That was after they upset the Chiefs week yep. one, too. Correct. That, wow. Yeah, that was a crazy game. I'm actually on Seattle in this one. I think it the line for this game opened at five and a half. Yep. So the fact that it's already down to three and a half means that I am unfortunately with the public as of right now, however, to exactly the same sentiment that Cerrone just shared. The public is going to balance that back out. Uh, I would expect this to get closer to four, maybe four and a half. Either way, I really like Seattle to win this one outright purely because of this fucking defense, dude. They are second. And EPA Dogs. allowed per play. They are first in overall success rate allowed. They are number two in DVOA. Yep. Uh, and I see. I don't beat good team. Who have they played? They came out. Have they, they played some. 
They beat so they the, Broncos, the Dolphins, the Patriots, Patriots and the, the Broncos. Dolphins. They have. Oh really yeah, give played. me the Lions. They haven't really played anyone yet. However, preseason, right? That's three weeks. It's kind of like the new preseason. Yep. It's over. Um, I think both of these teams are going to come out guns, fucking firing from the hip. Uh, this is going to be one of the the few overs that I probably take, even though I did just kind of hype up Seattle's defense. Their offense has been inconsistent for the most part in Seattle. However, they still are ranked fifth in offensive DVOA, adjusting for the strength of their opponents heading into week four. They might have Kenneth Walker back, uh, but even if they don't, Charbonnet is phenomenal. That That is such a good one-two punch. And uh, I think Geno Smith could do really, really well against this Detroit defense. Um, they look a Shaky. little bit weaker and shakier in the secondary than they did last year. And historically, uh, Geno is like night and day different when he's in a dome. Um, last September, I don't know if you guys recall, but he threw for over 300 yards. He had two touchdowns in that win. Uh, and I think Geno is going to be a huge difference maker. Like people still aren't giving him his flowers, yeah, which is fine. weird. Like he is balling out. Like this is a guy that no one thought about. He was just kind of a journeyman for a bit. I ain't right and then back, all of a no. sudden, yeah. all of a sudden, He's he's kind of three and oh, yeah. Him and Deshaun I, must have done like the space jam ball thing and accidentally 100 percent or something <laughs> yep. because what is going on? I love Jacob, like, oh. he's a dealer, dude. And I'm actually going to take the under here because I, I disagree. I think that the Lions secondary has gotten better. Carlton Davis, Terry, and Arnold, those additions critical. Uh, I just think that Monday night, you know, like those games, like we want so many points and then it just never it ends never. up going and Primetime this should be tough. like a, a, a like offense is firing all the cylinders but i think these you know what my hot take is here i don't mind if i could get this on FanDuel or something like that i'd love to see the odds on it this being the future nfc championship game seahawks mm-hmm. and Lions. i think these are both awesome awesome teams and i think they're only going to get better as the year goes that. on i got one mm-hmm. question before we end it um and i'm not even sure if i know the answer but through three weeks, who's your who's your MVP? Hmm. Josh that's Allen, very... seven touchdowns, zero interceptions. Yeah, that's averaging, great. That's a great, you know, almost two hundred. Other than Josh Allen, game, no. Who would ball? you really? There's been. Oh, would you give it to Geno? No, G- Geno would be up Sam there. Darnold, Darnold would be up there. Yep. Um. God, that's a great question. I'll take Josh Allen. Dude, low key. That's a very. Low I forgot key. about him. And DJ Stafford Watt. is at. 4,000. Plus 4,000 for MVP? 4,000. That's insane. Uh, same with also, dude, Kyler. Kyler is plus 2,200 right who's now. The, like, those who's, are, is Josh Allen so the, it's the favorite? Updated as of, I believe, this morning. Uh, it's Josh Allen plus 200. Mahomes Damn. plus 300. CJ Stroud plus 1,100. Lamar Steve somehow Bella. plus fifteen hundred. Yeah, they were Aaron Aaron Rodgers and Jalen Hurts tied for fifth yeah. at seventeen hundred, and then somehow Joe Burrow is right behind them at plus two thousand, and then it goes Kyler, Dak, Brock, Darnold, Stafford, Baker, Carr, Goff, Cousins. Who's the first non-quarterback listed? There isn't one on this list, but let me keep scrolling. Because we were doing that last week or two weeks ago, and I was just like, what do I have to do to get TJ Watt at MVP odds? Because I think we should break the mold this year and just not give it to a quarterback, especially when offenses are so down. Like, let's give it to somebody else. Let's First MVP since Adrian Peterson. That's not a quarterback. If there was anybody to break the mold, it was CMC last year, and they didn't yep. give it to him. Right. Um, Say even with Tyreek Hill getting the the Hill number line. one, that's just – yeah, I didn't see or that. Cooper Cup a couple years but, ago when he had the Triple Crown, that would have been a great year to give it to somebody. Yeah. It Saquon, just feels that like makes a, sense, though, for the first non-quarterback. As but I feel like odds. we should just change the name of the award to best quarterback, right? Because it always yeah. has the best quarterback We've on the best team. Before. Like. 
let's do MVP. Um, we have had this talk before. All right. Another trivia question, though, for you, Ralph, because oh, you already nailed AP as the last non quarterback mm-hmm. to win it. Who was the guy non quarterback before AP? I want to say Sean Alexander. <laughs> Close. No way. Uh, LT. Not. Yeah. It was wow. LT. Well, Thirty-two Ralph touchdowns, two thousand and six. Sean Alexander, I believe, was thirty-two touchdowns. Five. That's wild, bro. That's thirty-two touchdowns from scrimmage. Went... I think it was twenty-eight rushing and four receiving. He was just, and he threw one, or maybe it was three receiving and one. Yeah, he was unbelievable that year. That was the they baby blue the playoffs, huh? The oh, powder no. blue jersey. They probably... Yeah, they did. They were like twelve and four that year. I remember that year like the back Damn. of my hand. Classic LT. Um, Dude, 05 for was Sean Alexander. 06 was LT, and Not then bad. it's wow. just been quarterbacks yeah. yeah it's a damn shame and bring the mvp is, back to the fucking skill position it's kind of it's kind of understandable but maybe they do a new award where yeah it's just they make a, a quarterback one i mean you you look at some of the past ones like mahomes lamar i mean that's that's yep. understandable but like i said i think if anybody's gonna break cmc was untouchable last year like i said yep. if, if anybody was gonna do it I, I think it was last year but yeah, Josh Allen, that's a, that's a good uh, – he's been balling out for sure until this week. I, we'll see. I, dude, I still can't believe that Cooper Cup didn't get it in 2021. Triple crown. Like, baller. <laughs> what? Yeah. All right. Oh. Time to wrap. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, if you haven't yet, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Go listen to Rent Money. Go make some money. Uh, the boys are doing a great job over there, kicking ass and taking names. Uh, we will be back. Tuesday morning after the Monday Night Football games, being able to break down all of this slate. Uh, we will have another edition of Group Chat Truth or False, which is going to be a blast. So thank you guys for listening. Great. Everybody Great. have a wonderful weekend. Kick some ass, take some names. We will see you guys on the other side. Peace out. I'm loving the pop-off.